to welcome the standout defensive tackle for the Florida State Seminoles. He's Marvin Wilson. He's teamed up with Game Time Prep, an organization trying to help young athletes make it to college. And they've created what's called Marvin's Movement, which is to help kids understand the importance of money, sound money management, and also to be able to find affordable health care and marvin wilson is kind enough to join us right now marvin david and mark thanks for your time why are you so socially active let's face it marvin most people are not socially active never mind young college athletes why are you called to be so active uh, honestly you're never too young to change the world uh, i just feel like over the time with so much crisis going on and as athletes having a platform, I feel like it was just time for us to start standing up and doing what's right, helping change the world and help impact the generations under us and around us right now to start making the world a better place. Marvin, can you take us back to your meeting with Coach Norville? You know, he, he came out and said he talked to everybody, and you were the first one to say, um, yeah, that didn't happen. And not only did you speak your mind, but from the outside, you were right. You won, and he – Seem to take account to what you said. How did that meeting go? It was a, a great meeting. You know, um, we both came together. Uh, really, as we came together as a team, uh, we talked about the whole situation. Uh, Coach Novell was a uh, very advocate uh, about moving, uh, about helping us come together and move forward. Um, he showed us. Uh, he apologized to us. We came. Uh, we came up with certain things we want to do as a, a team. So it help impact the community and uh, make things better around us and just help change the generation. We all came together to know, to know it's time for change. Marvin, did you give it a lot of thought when you sent out the tweet that said, uh, it's not exactly what happened? Or did you just react the way you would instinctively as a player? Uh, no, honestly, I had to give it a, a lot of thought. Um, doing something like that, I knew... Uh, the territory that I was stepping stepping on, going out, going out and speaking out like that, especially socially on on such a platform like that. Um, I, I talked with somebody teammate before I had to uh, actually send that tweet out. You know, make sure it was all on the same accord. You know, that was just something huge we had to go. Uh, that I was a huge step I was going to take, and we was going to take as a program. And we just all got on one accord. Then, then I was uh, able to think about it for a couple a couple minutes. Then um, I sent that tweet out, Marvin. In, in all fairness, do you think a year ago, and I know this, look, the world's very different. Two months ago, two months ago, Marvin, do you think you could have sent a tweet out like that? I mean, do you, do you well, think, I mean, you've played sports, you've been coached. The, did you ever feel like you had the power that you have now as a young athlete? Oh, no, sir, not at all. Um, honestly, you know, uh, the thing most uh, people just expect are college football players, just not even, well, not football players, just athletes in general, just as, show up and play their sports, you know, um, through a time like crisis right now, we need everybody to speak up. Everybody has to be an advocate of what's going on in the world right now with social injustice and, and oppression, you know, think for African-Americans, you know, I just feel like more people need to start uh, speaking up and banding together and help uh, fight this cause. Marvin Wilson, standout defensive tackle for the Florida State Seminoles. He's teamed up with Game Time Prep uh, to create – Marvin's movement, which is to help young kids understand the importance of money, how to manage it, and also to be able to find affordable health care. It's called Marvin's movement. Marvin, did you see what took place in Stillwater, Oklahoma yesterday, where uh, a, a player kind of called out his coach uh, concerning his, you know, favorite news channel, if you will? I did. Is, is some are wondering, is that significant is that something that is important to the athlete to know their coach's political beliefs or just their beliefs in general do you feel that that is something that is now very important in the room um I'm sorry. So, so just knowing that, uh, the type of guy you're going to surround yourself around um uh, you know you want to you want somebody you want to be around people that you want to know uh that care about you more than just being a football player there care about you as a person and different things like that. So I think it's very important to, uh, just knowing your coach outside of just the football field and the stadium and things like that. You want to know who he is as a person. When you look at 
uh, like Kyrie Irving, who says, I'm not going to play to promote this cause. How important is it to continue to play in order for the platform to be there for you to say the things that you feel you need to say? Um, I feel like it comes down to the fact that um, when professional athletes, athletes can, at a, some, at a, a certain extent, can sit down because they already have, especially like a guy like Kyrie Irving, who well, is very established, very well off, you know, um, has a lot of say so, you know, way bigger platform, you know, um, guys like that are able to sit out, you know, and um, really, really just uh, voice their opinions until they get what they want. But I feel like college, college athletes are more at a disadvantage, you know, trying to, trying to get to that next level and th- uh, things such of that nature. So I feel like, um, more, more, we have to take more route of being able to uh, roll with the punches a little bit, but at the same time, voice our opinions and how how do we move forward from here to help us get still maintain our, I should say, on and off the field, but at the same time, help change and make a bigger impact. Marvin, once the season starts, how politically or socially active do you think you and your teammates can be like, you know, the Anthem is not an issue in college football because you guys are in the locker room when the Anthem is played. So I'm trying, you know, those of us that are wondering what type of expression that we're going to see this season on the field, have you given any thought to what it is that you think you can do once the season starts to just kind of remind folks as to what it is you're trying to promote? Uh, Honestly, we really want to, community involvement is probably one of the the hugest things we could do uh, during the season uh, to help people to vote and just help some, still support this cause and keep this this ball rolling. I think uh, getting out in the community still, giving back, uh, going out with especially like things like this, this program, uh, team up with different organizations, you know, different community service events, having different guys go out and um, just help give back. I think that's one of the hugest things we can do uh, as a team and as uh, college athletes during the season because uh, – you won't have that much of a necessary platform and different things like that. Uh, things like that to take a kneel or a uh, whole lock on before the uh, before the, during the anthem to show it. So I feel like uh, we have to take things outside the field. You know, when I'm reading the stuff you're doing with money management, it, you know that would make a lot of sense to me, Marvin. If you were three years in the league and you get that you get that draft money, what <laughs> what, what brought you to doing this now? I mean, I'm pretty impressed by this because. You know, I remember being your age in college, and all I was trying to hope for is that when I put the ATM card in, that there was money in my account so that I could go out that night and buy something to eat. So, uh, you know, what what brought the money management on? Is you're still a, a college athlete trying to play sports, go to class, figure out what the hell you're doing with life going forward? Why money management? What what brought this on? Because I commend it, but I'm just a little surprised trying to think back in my shoes, not being an athlete, just being a college kid. Um, it's a pretty big task that you're undergoing here. What brought this on? Uh, just during the time when our nation needs positivity to connect with one another, you know, just give a little, uh, to have another effect and change. It was more important for me to do something that would just, uh, that will make a difference. You know, this movement is more than just helping uh, give kids a, a, a solid, solid money foundation. It's about giving them knowledge, skills, and to take charge of their lives. You know, me personally, uh, I was just the same way in college, um, learning how to just, I got money, okay, I'm just do whatever I want to until I'm broke, honestly, just making sure I live paycheck to paycheck. And after a while, uh, me uh, saving up a little bit and uh, purchasing my first uh, car on my own, uh, now I have to realize how much more I have to budget my money and build credit, doing the right things on time. You know, these are some things I never knew I had to do until I actually made that huge move and actually moved off campus. You know, different things, stuff like that leading me into the uh, real world. It's like I'm finding out all these different things on my uh, on my own, uh, or so so quickly and so fast that I never knew I needed to know. And um, I feel like just giving that back to kids, you know, that was gonna help help them get uh, get on the right foot, stepping forward. You know, just letting them know uh, how to build credit, uh, healthcare options, different uh, uh, different ways to uh, budget their money. I feel like that's gonna be huge, uh, especially for them. Going into the real world, whether it's college or just stepping out uh, and getting a job early right out of high school, you know, different things like that. I feel like it's going to help them set up apart and give them that first little step into the real world to uh, step forward. 
Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle, Florida State, helping to create Marvin's movement. And as Mark alluded to, it's to help young people be able to understand the importance, significance, how to manage your money, but also how to access affordable health care. And I think we could all <laughs> seek that out no matter how old uh, we are. Marvin, in all seriousness, when you committed to play at Florida State, they were coming off double-digit win seasons. Jimbo had it going. This will be your third head coach now, uh, four if you count interim head coaches. It obviously has not gone from a wins and loss standpoint the way you hoped it would when you committed to Florida State. How tough has it been, and how big is this senior year to you? Uh, the senior year is used to me. Uh, just coming back, trying to make this thing work. Uh, knowing it's going to work, though, um, I feel like it, it's been great. It's been a great uh, – we have been working together. The team has gotten a lot closer. The team has started getting into a place how they should be. We do, uh, we're just stacking the good days on top of good days right now. But these last uh, three and a half years uh, that I've been here, you know, uh, I learned how to face adversity head on. You know, it's not about how you um, – you know, what happens, but how you react to every situation. I feel like I've grown a lot throughout this whole process here at Florida State. Uh, especially just me as a player, you know, just being able to uh, play in three or four different defenses since I've been here and learning different t uh, terminology. I didn't play anything from a zero to a five technique. Uh, it's made plays at, at almost every zero from a zero to a five. You know, I feel like I've created so much versatility. There's always beauty in every struggle. And I feel like uh, me me playing uh, in this system, these different systems that I've been playing, I feel like more NFL ready than most uh, – Defense alignment coming out, though, just because the uh, situations that I've been put in, uh, different spots I've been put in, just no learn different uh, terminology from each defense that we played in, uh, just learn how to be a better overall player. And Marvin, you know, we had uh, Jeff Cameron on from Tallahassee Radio last week just talking about the Knowles in general and asked him about the team. And he just said, you know, hey, the offense, the line, they've, they've got depth issues, these things, but the defense can flat out be great, not good. Great. Do you think that that is – what is your – what is the goals of the defensive unit? Because between you and a couple other players, you got a D-back coming back that's done big things. I mean, there's some talent on that side of the football. What are the goals for the Florida State defense as, as you're their leader, obviously? Well, definitely the, the goal every year is to be the best uh, the best defense of college football. You know, you don't play the game just to be second or third. You want to be the best at everything you do. And, uh for us, we want to want to be the most dominant defense, uh, really to ever touch the football next year, and that's how we want to go go into the season. But uh, how we approach meetings every day, our zone meetings. That's how we approach uh, just everything, every workout. That, that's just the mindset for us as a team. And offensively, I can promise that things are definitely going to be a turnaround. Um, so like the mindset we have uh, James Blackman coming back, coming back, great. Great quarterback. Uh, we have an offensive line uh, that's working together. Uh, with not, a lot, not, not a lot of nice uh, talent coming in. Running back, court, running back quarter is building tight ends. Every, I feel like we have everything we need, especially with a lot of strong receivers such as Tamari on Terry, Keyshawn Hilton, you know, uh, Warren J. You know, different guys coming back. Uh, that I feel like they're going to really take off. I just really, I can't wait to see it. We really can't wait to camp. Everything to come together couple of big early season games, if they happen, West Virginia and Boise State. Marvin, how concerned are you and your teammates about the coronavirus? Do you guys talk about it at all? Um, not really since we started back with workouts. You know, we just uh, pray about it every day and give God, you know, moving forward. I feel like, um, I feel like we're just gonna, I, we really hope they're going to be a season. We know that we know they're going to be a season. That's, that's the way we're looking at it every day, and we're going to work like it. You know, um, you can't just uh, live every day off of Thinking is it is it going to be a season or is it not? You just got to prepare every day like we're going to have a season. So you have to uh, get ready. You're already ready. Marvin, congratulations on uh, your last three weeks and, uh, and also creating Marvin's movement here. We hope you're able to help a lot of young kids throughout the state. I know you're trying to get uh, connected to many of the school districts throughout the state. So, uh, Marvin, we wish you all the best. Stay healthy, and hopefully we can talk again. I yes, appreciate you. Thanks, Marvin. Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle, Florida State. Marvin's movement is what it's called. You can look it up and get involved if you are so inclined. Um, there are many of us who think that, quite frankly, what he's trying to do should be uh, uh, a class that, that is taught in, um, in high school and early in college, quite frankly.
That's uh, that's real life stuff right there. That's uh, I'm impressed because let's be frank. Without the being an athlete and the time and effort it takes, and I've had a job all through college, I would have never thought in a million years to do a damn thing socially active at that age. Not a damn thing. Well, and also and this is think a top ten a... pick. Sorry, I mean this is the top yeah. ten pick. Right. Like this is not say... this is not a fringe player. This guy is a top ten pick right now. Right. I was just going to say, Mark, this is a huge year in his life, a huge year, and with a lot of uncertainty, quite frankly, because of the coronavirus. Never mind the fact that he's on a program that's struggling, and it's, as we mentioned, he's playing for his third head coach, and he's got enough going on just from a football standpoint. And the fact that he wants to do something else and help people is – Something to commend him for, no question about it. And I don't know. I sensed it with humility, not with vigor. If you know what I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't preaching to anybody. He was just. I want to do something. I want to help. But this kid, you know, I thought is that I'd like to almost if if I had that taped, I'd like to just play the one answer he gave for Pat. Worked with different terminology. I've gone from a you know from a zero, zero to a five. To five I mean, eight, yeah. Yep. I mean, I think Pat Kerwin, if he was listening to that, would have been salivating. And the other answer that struck with me was when we asked, so how important is it for you as a player to know where your coach is coming from and his political views? And he said, it's important to know what he thinks of us personally whether or not he cares about us at all outside of playing football.